Sometimes a medical emergency requires immediate action. And wasting a few precious minutes can mean the difference between life and death. This is why it's also important you're able to recognize these symptoms and know what to do. In this video, we will cover the answer to all of these questions and much, much more considering a stroke. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. And for those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewer, because educated people make healthier decisions. So let's get started. As all organs, your brain needs nutrients and oxygen to remain functioning, which are both present in blood, which is transported to your brain to your carotid arteries and your vertebral arteries. Here it is important to mention that brain cells can be very fragile and cannot withstand long periods without oxygen or nutrients. And to make matters even worse, most types of brain cells can be replicated. So if the blood supply to a part of your brain is decreased or even stopped, this will quickly lead to brain cells dying. This can lead to disability, permanent brain damage, and ultimately this can even be fatal. This whole process is called a stroke. And to make this video as useful as possible for you, we start with the most important thing first. Remember the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T. And this is also important if you do think someone is suffering from a stroke. So the F in the acronym FAST stands for FACE. As a stroke might interfere with your brain's ability to control your facial muscles. Therefore, it might cause your face to drop on one side, where you may not be able to smile or open up your eyelids. The A in FAST stands for arms. The stroke might also affect the part of your brain that normally is involved in voluntary movement of muscles. This causes an inability to lift your arms up, sometimes in combination with weakness and numbness in your arm. The S stands for speech, as it might be slurred, hard to understand, or a person might not be able to speak at all. In addition, a stroke could also interfere with someone's ability to understand words. And lastly, the D stands for time. As mentioned, brain cells are very fragile, so if you do experience any of the previously mentioned symptoms, please call 911 or an emergency line because you need medical emergency help immediately. To make the video complete, a stroke can also cause other symptoms, which might be weakness or numbness in your legs, problems with vision, dizziness, balance problems, problems with walking or mobilizing, fainting or losing consciousness, severe headache and sudden nausea. Now, I hope this part of the video was clear. If it wasn't, please watch it again because it was the most important. Seek help if you need it as fast as possible. So on to the next question, which you might wonder, how can the blood flow to your brain actually be decreased or even blocked? This is usually a process years in the making. Over the years, your body can build up plaques of fat, cholesterol, and other substances in your arteries which in medical terms is called atherosclerosis. If these plaques become big enough, they can block the entire blood flow to a blood vessel. In addition, these plaques and the blood vessels can sometimes rupture and form a blood clot, which then blocks the blood flow. So in essence, there are two main causes that can cause a stroke. The first one is caused by the blood clots. Those can stop the blood flow and it is called an ischemic stroke which accounts for about 85% of all strokes. The second cause is the bursting or the rupturing of a blood vessel. This is usually caused by atherosclerosis or trauma. This is called a hemorrhagic stroke. And lastly, you might also have heard of a mini stroke or a TIA, which stands for a transient ischemic attack. Here, the blood supply to the brain is just temporarily interrupted and no permanent brain damage occurs. This may last for minutes, up to 24 hours. And I can imagine you want to reduce your own chances on developing a stroke. And here it is important to mention that there are certain factors which might increase your risk for developing a stroke. Those are called risk factors. The most impactful risk factors are a high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart rhythm problems, diabetes, smoking, birth control pills, previous strokes or TIAs, a high red blood cell count, lack of exercise, obesity, excessive alcohol use, illegal drug use, an age above 55 years of age, being a man, genetics, and living in a location with extreme temperature changes. As you might have noticed, these risk factors are quite common. 
and we will all develop at least one or two during our lifetime. But the positive part is that some of them are totally preventable or reducible. And the magic word here is lifestyle. So stop smoking, limit your alcohol consumption, exercise at least 150 minutes each week, consume a balanced diet with low levels of saturated fats, salts and sugar, eat plenty of fibers, fruits and vegetables, maintain a healthy weight, have a structured sleeping schedule of about 7 to 9 hours of sleep each night and decrease stress. Do so by maintaining social contact, doing fun activities and relaxing. Unfortunately, some people will implement all of these lifestyle interventions and will still develop a stroke. And then medical emergency help is necessary. In these cases, your healthcare provider or doctor will ask you about your current symptoms, your medical history and the medicines you are using. Afterwards, he or she will do a physical examination, do some blood tests and may do brain imaging like a CT scan, MRI scan or an ECG of your heart, which is a recording of your heart's electrical activity and or an angiography, which gets imaging from your blood vessels. And if you're indeed suffering from a stroke, medical treatment is started. Now, unfortunately, there is no cure for a stroke. However, treatment is aimed at reducing the symptoms you might experience, decreasing the permanent brain damage and preventing future attacks. Of course, also increasing your survivability. Your doctor might prescribe clot busting medicines like thrombolytics. These medicines dissolve the blood clots that could cause an ischemic stroke. Furthermore, your doctor might recommend medicines and therapy to reduce or control brain swelling. These are usually used in a hemorrhagic stroke. If necessary, life support measures are taken. These treatments include using a machine to help you breathe, having IV fluids, getting proper nutrition and controlling your blood pressure. And lastly, a craniotomy can be performed. This is a type of brain surgery that is done to remove blood clots, relieve pressure and repair bleeding in the brain. And after all is said and done, revalidation is started to bring you back in the best physical and mental shape as possible. During this time, and probably for the rest of your life, your doctor will recommend certain medicines to reduce your chances of ever developing a stroke ever again. The first option is blood thinning medication. This will reduce the forming of blood clots, which prevents, hopefully, another stroke. Other possible drugs could be antiplatelet medications, such as aspirin, which is also prescribed in many stroke patients. This will make your blood thinner and clot less. In addition, your doctor might also recommend blood pressure medicines or cholesterol-lowering drugs to lower your risk of arteriosclerosis. And lastly, if necessary, if you're diabetic, your doctor will prescribe drugs to lower your blood glucose levels. Now, I hope you can recognize a stroke now and I hope you will never forget the acronym FAST as this can be life-saving. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And if you do want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description as well. If you did enjoy the video, if you did learn something, please click the like and subscribe button. It's free and that will help out the channel tremendously. And I will be posting weekly medical videos. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the Instagram as well, at How to Medicaid. And I want to give special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an investor team supporter. And I will see you all with a new video next week. Bye-bye and stay healthy. Thank you.